Hello ladies and gentlemen, Tevron here, back with another episode of Friday Night Magic, and glad to be back doing it. Honestly, my voice is for the most part back, though we are going to be very careful as we proceed and not lose it again. And we are again uh, playing a red deck here, uh, this time red and black, Rakdos race cars if you will. Uh, unfortunately, it still seems that control is not very good in the duels meta at present, at least if you are not willing to run Sphinx's tutelage, as I prefer to avoid if possible. But anyway, let's see what we're doing here with this red-black get em dead type deck. We're running two Goblin Glory Chasers, a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one that can become renowned and gain menace. Three Inventor's Apprentice, a one mana one two that with an artifact out becomes a two three nerd ape if you will. Three Insolent Neonate, another one mana one one with menace and the additional ability of being able to discard a card and sacrifice it to draw a card. Also running two Bowmat Courier, a one mana haste, a pseudo card advantage if everything plays out right. A pair of shocks, one mana instant, deal two damage to target creature or player. Running a pair of glint sleeve siphoners for a black and a colorless, we get a 2-1 human rogue with menace. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, we get an energy. At the beginning of our upkeep, we may pay two energy. If we do, we can draw a card and lose a life. And now an oldie but a goodie, three Forerunner of Slaughter for a black and a red. We have a 3-2 Eldrazi Drone. It is devoid, so it has no color. We can pay one and target colorless creature gains haste until end of turn. This has synergies not only with itself, but with some of the other things in our deck, such as Scrap Heap Scrounger here. We're running the pair to cost for a 3-2 Artifact Creature. It can't block, but for a black and one, we can exile another creature card from our graveyard and return Scrap Heap Scrounger from the graveyard to the battlefield. Also, Forerunner of Slaughter having synergies with vehicles, as once they are crewed, they are creatures, and it can give them haste. The first of which is Heart of Kirin, a two-cost 4-4 four, four flying vigilant legendary vehicle. Crew cost of three, or you can remove a loyalty counter from a planeswalker we control, rather than pay its crew cost. Uh, spoilers, we won't be doing that as we aren't running any planeswalkers. Also, two a Smuggler's Copter, two cost 3-3 three, three Flyer that lets us loot with a crew cost of one. A pair of Harness Lightning as further more versatile creature removal. Also, providing us energy to feed some of our other cards, such as Ether Hub and the Glint Sleeve Siphoner, which we saw earlier for one and a red. We get three energy, and then we can pay any amount of energy to deal that much damage to the creature we're targeting. Also to Pia Nalar. Pia is great in any vehicle-centric deck as she comes into play with a 1-1 Thopter and between the two of them can crew most things and in a lot of circumstances can crew multiple things. Also has the ability to pump artifacts or to sacrifice an artifact and make a creature unable to block for the turn. One of the other new cards that are being featured in this deck are three Weldfast Engineers for a black, a red, and a colorless. We have a 3-3 Human Artificer. At the beginning of combat on our turn, target artifact creature we control gets plus 2, plus 0 oh, until end of turn. The next vehicle in our lineup is a pair of Ether Sphere Harvester. For a 3 cost, we have a 3-5 Vehicle with Flying. When it enters the battlefield, we get two energy counters. We can pay an energy and it gains lifelink until end of turn with a crew of one. Last card in our removal suite is the full three of unlicensed disintegration. For one, a red and a black, we get an instant that destroys target creature and if we control an artifact, it deals three damage to that creature's controller. Unlicensed disintegration is much better now as they have fixed the Planeswalker targeting on it, so if we kill one of their creatures, we can now choose to redirect this to one of their Planeswalkers, which was not able to be done previous to the patch. Also in our vehicle lineup, 
a pair of Fleet Wheel Cruiser for four mana. We have a 5-3 vehicle with Trample and Haste that cruise itself the turn it comes into play and a crew cost of two at any other time. And last but certainly not least, Sky Sovereign Console Flagship. Five mana for a 6-5 flying vehicle. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, it can deal three damage to target creature or planeswalker, an opponent controls, and a crew cost of three. The mana base is three swamp, as we are much, much heavier on red than black, as you can see down here. Black is basically just a splash in the deck. Nine mountain, two smoldering marsh, two dragon skull summit, three ether hub, and four cinder barons. The reason we are running cinder barons over the evolving wilds in this deck is we don't want to really be thinning lands out of our deck. We want to be able to hit our larger drops of four and five cost. Also, Cinder Barons is technically a better mana fixer than Evolving Wilds as they both come into play tapped ostensibly. Uh, evolving Wilds fetches a tapped basic, but Cinder Barons can produce both colors of mana we're interested in, while Evolving Wilds can only ever fetch for one color of mana that we're interested in. That is the deck list. Let's play some games. Okay, I think this is a perfectly serviceable hand, so we will keep it. We're going to lead off with the Inventor's Apprentice to get in the maximum amount of damage. If we lead off with the Bowmat Courier, we get one extra card exiled under it. However, over the course of two turns, it will only swing for two damage. Whereas Inventor's Apprentice Coming down first will give us a total of three damage, which now that I think about it, we can't actually accomplish since we don't have a red mana that comes into play untapped. So we'll lead off with the Smoldering Marsh and be a little bit slower than I otherwise would like. All right, Sanitarium looks like we're probably up against a mill deck here, probably Fevered Visions and Sphinx's Tutelage on our horizon. Seems to be indicative cards of that archetype here. We will go with Swamp now, and we will cast our Bowmat Courier and our Inventor's Apprentice, and we will crash in for one. And there we go. Also could have just played out the Forerunner of Slaughter. However, I want to start getting damage in as quickly as possible. There is the aforementioned Sphinx's tutelage. So hopefully we can keep our motors running and keep pounding away. All right, Weld Fast Engineer. So we're not really interested in sacking this. So we are going to play the Forerunner of Slaughter out here. Also, could be playing into a Radiant Flames or a Kozilek's Return here. However, I don't really think that we can afford to play around that at this point. After this turn, we will probably not be deploying things that can die quite so easily to such removal sweepers. Now that we have a significant amount of damage on the board... Sphinx's Tutelage going to mill us here for at least two, and two exactly, getting a Cinder Barons and a Fleet Wheel Cruiser. Cathartic Reunion from the opponent, so we will be milling at minimum six cards here. So two on the first one, two on the second one, and two on the third one. Good, absolute minimum there. Lightning Axe, if they also have a Fiery Temper, that will be unfortunate. And they do, so they will be killing two things. Interested to see whether it's this and this, or this and this. Okay, killing the Courier. Not going to say that's fine, as I would very much like for those to have stuck around, but it's not the worst thing that could have happened. Very good to draw an untapped land there. So we are going to play our Harvester. That pumps our Apprentice up again. And we will also play our Insolent Neonate and swing for two. 
Next turn, we can play Weldfast Engineer, which can crew the Harvester as well as giving it plus two, plus O. Oh. The Life Link is unlikely to be incredibly influential in this game, as that's not really our opponent's primary win condition. Okay, take inventory, so we are going to get milled a bit more here. And that time they hit four. They hit a Weld Fast Engineer and an Insolent Neonate, which share a color, and so we get milled again. And here is another take inventory, so again, minimum four here. And four on the first one, that is unfortunate. Only two on the second. Don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I think we're in decent shape here. All right, Cinder Barons, we will be playing that out. Also need to remember that we have a Scrap Heap Scrounger in the yard, but we want the extra damage from Weld Fast Engineer at this point, I believe. It is important that we crew before combat as it can only target if it's already a creature when the trigger goes on the stack. You can't crew in response and still be able to target your vehicle with that plus two. So we will go in. Give this plus two. They are going to make it unable to attack. And then we will swing for three. Taking them to 11. And pass. Right, let's see if we only get two or more here. Just two, that's great. Collective Defiance, probably cycling their hand. Yep, killing here, cycling their own hand, so milling us minimum for six. Two. Two. Come on, just two, just two. Two. All righty. Now. Three, four, five, six damage here. Um, Tarnus Lightning isn't incredibly relevant. Let's go ahead and recur our Scrounger, if I can get my mouse to cooperate. We'll remove a Forerunner of Slaughter, that's fine. And we will use it to crew the Harvester. Just getting in maximum damage possible. And swing. We also could have deployed the Sky Sovereign this turn, but I think it's more important to just deal as much damage as we can, as quickly as we can. We are very close to getting milled out here. Just two again, that's great. Cathartic Reunion, okay, we could lose here, depending on what they get and how many they mill on each activation. Two. All right, come on. Two. Darn it. Four. That's bad. And two. Basically, any other card draw spell will probably kill us here. And that is probably enough. Unless they just mill two on each of these, we are dead. There's two. There's two. Come on, have a heart. Yes! Please don't have another card draw spell. And they do. They had the mana to activate Sanitarium. And so, we lose. Good game, opponent. It was very, very close. Let's just go ahead and kill ourselves. Oops. No. Kill ourselves. No card to draw, and so we lose the game. Okay. Well, I think we're going to keep this. And we're going to err on not playing the Glory Chaser out, as I would very much like to Smuggler's Copter into using it on turn two for certain. Would be very awesome if we had access to the duels from Shadows block in magic duels, but we do not. The lands, those are 
sort of akin to the duels that we have from Zendikar. Except when we play those duels, we have to reveal a basic corresponding to the colors they produce, and then they come into play untapped. That would be something this sort of aggressive deck would be very interested in. Not one of the cards that actually made the transition, though, so not much we can do about that. I think Pia is the play here. Opponent could have a removal spell for the copter here. Spatial Contortion is castable with what they have up there. And there it is. Alrighty. I'll just pass back over. Alright, Matter Reshaper. We will probably just be shocking that. Hopefully they won't hit something else capable of blocking off its trigger. And they didn't, so that will go to their hand. We'll play our Barons, then play our other two one-drops. And swing for three. Alright, back over to the opponent, who for certain has a Nissa's Pilgrimage they can cast this turn. Ruins of Orin Reef into Nissa Vastwood Seer, okay? Wonder if they will be willing to block with Nissa. We are going to cast our Forerunner of Slaughter. And then it is going to give itself haste. And we will attack with everything but the Glory Chaser. They can't block the Neonate. They only have one creature. And if they block either Pia or the Forerunner, they lose Nissa. Choose not to, so we will play Inventor's Apprentice out. And hopefully they aren't running red in this deck. We have not seen any red mana yet. A Radiant Flames or a Kozilek's Return would be horrible for us here. Walker of the Wastes, okay? That is a 6-6. Six, six. It's a, a Trample, and it gets plus one, plus one for each land they control called Waste. So... We can sacrifice the Thopter to make this unable to block. Then they could block here, and they would take two, three, four, five, taking them to five. It's debatable whether that is a good thing to do or not. I think we're going to Cinder Barons, and then we are just going to swing with the Thopter. And we will use Pia's ability to pump it twice. Really do wish they hadn't taken out the right-click functionality from duels. Zooming and clicking the arrow arrows is so much more fidgety. Alright, Thought Not Seer. That is not going to take anything out of our hand as we don't have anything in our hand. Do have the Orin Reef up to put a counter on it. And I think, depending on what we draw, that swinging with the Thopter is still the better play here. We will go ahead and cast the Forerunner, though. Then attack for two. And go ahead and pump that up. 
Unlicensed Disintegration wouldn't be a bad draw either. Four, five, six. They are also one land from flipping Nyssa. And there it goes. Nyssa will turn into the Planeswalker version. Probably, no. I was going to say probably make a 4-4, but no. Nyssa's Pilgrimage, all right. All right, there is a Duskwatch Recruiter. They do have the mana to activate its search ability there. Insolent Neonate. So, if we were to sack the Thopter to make one of these not able to block, they could still block our biggest two, which would be the Forerunners of Slaughter, and they would take two, three, four, five, six, which is lethal. make sure, take a second here and make sure I'm not miscounting. Now, that is lethal, that is if they don't have a spatial contortion in hand. We could just swing with the Thopter again for three. Yeah, I think I'm just going to be safe here and swing with the Thopter at their face. Confirm. Let's go ahead and pump it. And pump it again. Taking them to two, and they probably don't have a spatial contortion because they almost certainly would have used it on the Thopter there. And yeah, we'll go ahead and play the Neonade out, too. We're about as overextended as you can get at this point, so why not commit more to the board? Alright, Duskwatch Recruiter activation there. Getting a Druid of the Cow, that cannot block Flyers. Plussing on Nyssa. Rishkar's expertise. Well, that could be very bad. We shall see. Play their land for the turn, taking them to eight mana on board. Okay, going to be drawing six and then playing a five drop for free. And I think unless they can fog or wipe the board, they're going to be dead on this next turn as they only have three blockers. Probably four blockers now. Five blockers, but that's still not enough. Especially as none of them fly, so we can just safely swing with the Thopter and pump it once. Or just, you know, Shock their face. That works too. And I'll see you guys in the next game. Alright, opponent is playing first. Uh, yeah, I think this is a fine hand. We will keep. We've got Neonate into Heart of Kirin. Potentially, if we draw an untapped mana into Pia and Kirin. And then we've got Fleet Will Cruiser awaiting in the wings. Well, there's an untapped mana. Let's go ahead and Insolent Neonate. Don't really need the black mana as of yet. We haven't drawn any cards that require it, so no rush on getting this Cinder Barons into play. Alrighty, I am suspicious that we're up against a Planeswalker deck. So the question is here, do we Heart of Kirin or do we Bomet Courier? And I think we Heart of Kirin. I think that will deal the most damage the most quickly. I'm not really sure about the um, construction of that sentence I just said, but you know, there it is, it's out there. Heart of Kirin. 
and Pianar will be able to crew that next turn along with the Thopter that she creates for us. Again, if we can manage to draw another untapped mana source before turn 4, then we will have an incredibly aggressive curve. Topping out at Fleet Wheel Cruiser here. Alright, Topin Freeblade. So maybe we are not up against a Planeswalker deck. Maybe it's just a Bant. Good stuff. We will play out PNLR. And swing for 5. Again, uh, Neonate not able to be blocked by the opponent. It does have Menace. True. And attack. And even if we're not able to deploy Fleet Will next turn, we can do a little Chain Dance, playing out Bomat Courier and Smuggler's Copter, having the Courier crew the Copter and the Copter crew the Heart of Kieran so that our other stuff can attack if we want them to. Um, well, they are leaving the game. We will continue. That Topin Freeblade could be a bit of a problem, especially when they attack, and it becomes a 3-3 now. And who knows what else they have going on in hand at this point. All right, fetching. Or a planes. It looks like they are indeed bant. And a selfless spirit. Makes me wish we were running walking ballista, but we're not. Aha! A mountain, eh? In that case, I think we will fleet wheel. And we will crew with Pia and the Thopter. We will still attack with Neonate. They can block with both. That would mean Fleet Wheel Cruiser gets through unmolested, though. And Neonate can take out the Selfless Spirit. So, yeah, I think we just attack. All right going to sack the spirit, keep this alive. They will still get trampled over for two. And we will pass the turn. Taking three here. We can Bowmat into Smuggler's Copter to crew this. That's four, five, six, seven, eight. That's not quite enough to kill them. We could also, the reason I was counting all the damage is Pia could sacrifice the Bowmat to make this unable to block. But they are declarationing in stone our Pia. So that is unfortunate. However, we are going to Cinder Barons into a Smuggler's Copter. Which is getting Spell Quellered. Okay. Well, that's a little unfortunate. Wonder if they're going to feel obligated to block, though. Let's crew. And crash for four. Looks like they are satisfied with not blocking at this point. We will pass. Alright. Continuing to make their land drops. That might not be something they actually want to do, though. Avacyn is also a very real possibility now. They have six mana up. We'll almost certainly be cracking the clue this turn. Well, Avacyn is not a possibility now, as Gideon has joined the fray. So we can take them to three. Oh, they didn't make a knight with Gideon. They just plussed it. Guess they thought I might kill it. Well, then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is exactly lethal for us at this point. Let's go ahead and crack this clue. 
Okay. So. We probably need to block. Question is, what do we hold to block? It has to be this neonate, I think. So let's crew. So we can block here and still take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and leave us alive. Oops, nope. Continue. If they have a removal spell, though, we are in trouble. Let's see if we can find an unlicensed disintegration, shall we? That is not what that is. Still, shock is okay. Pass. Always watching. Don't think that that gets the job done. That leaves them not enough mana to activate their lumbering falls. Okay, we have to block here. And I don't think we sacrifice as we're going to be depending on burning them out as they've got all these things untapped. I wonder why Gideon's upside down. It's a graphical glitch there. Uh, yeah, confirm block. Okay. And there is our second shock. We also had the ability to swing with Bowmat Courier uh, after we played out our shock to sack it and see what we could draw. No need to do that, though. As we just drew it. And we'll go on to the next game, but I think you guys see my point about how um, a lot of people concede way too early when there actually is a point to playing the game out. They were very close to killing us that game. Uh, no thank you. Yeah, that's better. Keep hand. We will just lead off with the summit as we have no one drops to be playing. Then we'll be turn two copter into either Forerunner of Slaughter or PNLR, I guess, if we draw a untapped third mana source here. Arguments to be made for Weldfast Engineer as it does deal more damage combined with the Smuggler's Copter. That's all moot, though, if we don't draw an untapped third mana source. They lead off with Renegade Map. Great mana fixer as well as Revolt Enabler. We'll just go ahead and play the Copter. Alright, so black and green. Ah! A snake deck. Very well. I guess they are debating on whether or not to crack this renegade map or not. Seems they opt not to. Another copter. Well, copter is great and all, but... I think we're better off just using our mana efficiently. And swinging. Arguments, again, could be made for Harness Lightning this before it can get out of control. But I really want to get damage in and potentially draw into a land drop with our Smuggler's Copter here. Uh, yes, please. We did not hit it. Probably want to discard our other Copter. All right, Ether Hub. And a Green Belt Rampager. That is a big doggy. And a Glint Sleeve Siphoner as well. So now we have quite a bit of stuff sitting across from us to deal with. 
as well as being pounded for two in the face by the winding constrictor itself. And is a little bit debatable as to what the biggest threat is here. A siphoner can draw extra cards. This guy is huge and this can make other things huge. Hmm. Well, I think we're going to start by attacking with the copter. And seeing what the loot shows us. Yes, please. Another engineer. I think we are going to pitch one of the engineers. Then we will probably be harnessed lightning something. The question is what? I think the siphoner is probably our biggest issue at the moment as it can draw extra cards. So we will kill it. Don't really have the option to kill the Rampager. We don't have any energy in our pool yet. A second Rampager. That is bad also. And a land drop. Okay. Taking five here. Going to 13. Alright, let's see what we get off the top of our deck. A mana, unfortunately it does come into play tapped. We don't have two basics out yet. So what is the play? Well, Fast Engineer deals the most damage. That is, if this is not a removal spell remaining in their hand. It would make the copter swing for five. Uh, PNLR floods the board the best. And I think that's what we're going to do. We'll play out PNLR. If it lets me, there we go. Then the copter will be crewed by a thopter. And we will swing holding back the rest of our team. Yes, please. Vomat Courier. Not entirely thrilled about that. So, I think it is better than the Neonate, though, as we already have one. So we will ditch another Neonate. We'll be in the realm of pay playing two spells in a single turn, starting next turn. And hopefully this Forerunner, being untapped, will hold this Winding Constrictor at bay. Alright, sacrificing their map now. Either needing to make a land drop or wanting to trigger revolt for something. Narnum Renegade, okay. That is big because of the Winding Constrictor. Getting an extra plus one counter. So do we want to double block here? It would cause one of our creatures to die as well as one of theirs. They don't have anything that can block flyers, so I think that is what we want to do. Hopefully they don't have a pump spell in hand. And they didn't, so that's good. Fleet Wheel Cruiser is an okay draw. And I think it is the correct play here as well. We'll crew the copter. And we will swing with the vehicles. Yes, please. Another four runner. Uh, we have four. So at this point, I think that... Mm, let's see. Three for sure, taking them to eight. 
yeah, I think we ditch the Weld Fast Engineer in that way we can deploy our entire hand next turn. All right, trading Narnum for the Fleet Wheel Cruiser. We still get one damage through there from the Trample, taking them to seven. All right, continuing to make land drops and a Fleet Wheel Cruiser of their own. So they have exactly lethal on board if they swing with everything and we decline to block. And they are. I think we kill this. Yes. We'll go to two. Then we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that should be the ball game. Go ahead and give itself haste. The courier also has haste. And Neonate can crew the smuggler's copter. That is another very close game. Just the kind I like to play. Keep you on the edge of your seat. Lots of back and forth. No need. And I think that that will do it for this episode of Friday Night Magic, friends. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like below. It really does help tremendously. And consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see more videos from me in the future. I have been Tevron, and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other.